This video is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe and help get this video to 2,000 likes. And I say, hey. Arthur and Buster are playing catch outside because it's 2006 and the only thing worth watching on YouTube at the time was this. Mr. Reed is horrified to find a chip in the cake plate he bought for a wedding gig. They specifically requested this one. And they put the caterer in charge of ordering it? Seems more like something the wedding planner would be responsible for. But whatever. We gotta have an episode, I guess. D.W. comes in and the first words out of her mouth is, she didn't do it. A well-worn tune she'll be singing the rest of her life. Arthur says he's been outside all day when D.W. chimes in like the free-range blabbermouth she is. Turns out, D.W. was secretly filming Arthur without his consent. She shows her father a tape of Arthur and Buster playing catch in the living room. At the same time, the plate was broken. Mr. Reed grounds his son on the spot, even though Arthur swears it wasn't his fault. Mr. Reed gets back to work, while D.W. takes a moment to rub salt in her brother's wounds. Which reminds me, you boys dance divinely. Have fun with your talk tonight. What a bitch. D.W. makes her grand exit, having nothing else to contribute to the plot. But a lot of you wanted me to cover this episode, so let's press forward. Arthur and Buster set out to prove their innocence and go to Fern's house for detective advice, which feels like something that could have easily been done over the phone. Fern tells him to take a page out of Sherlock Holmes' book, so Arthur goes home to do cocaine. Turns out, D.W.'s tape has also convinced Mrs. Reed that her son is guilty, even though she's the one who put a glass plate near an open windowsill in the first place. The boys take the tape to the brain, who points out the crack in the plate is inconsistent with a type of damage a baseball could do. He also isolates a mysterious sound from the tape using some super high-tech Ultra Pro Tools bullshit that absolutely 100% definitely exists. The boys scour Arthur's living room to find the source of the noise and discover a watch belonging to Miss Persky, who delivered the plate to the house. Miss Persky says she never went inside the house and then jumps on the fuck you Arthur bandwagon. Are you sure you didn't break it? Why does that voice sound familiar? Arthur starts to question his own sanity as everyone is turned against him. The boys go to Fern, who tells them the watch is the only thing that could have broken the plate. Which, again, could have been covered on a phone call. The boys go back to Arthur's house, where they discover the source of the noise is a faulty manhole cover. Arthur starts to put two and two together, and comes up with a plan to prove his innocence. Arthur's house, 6.10 p.m. We're already at the house. We don't need a second title card. Also, why are you saying all the locations out loud? It's not like your audience can't read. They're, wait, maybe they can't. That evening, Arthur gathers everyone to reveal the truth, but not before D.W. gets in one last dig at her brother. Thank you all for coming. I need all the time. Mom. It turns out Miss Persky's watch fell off her wrist after she dropped off the plate. The watch was then propelled by the manhole cover through the window and cracked the plate. Which sounds like the kind of bullshit an actual eight-year-old would make up to save their ass. Mr. Reed apologizes to Arthur, and Miss Persky agrees to replace the plate free of charge. I do so love a good mystery. This is a story of when Caillou went to the park with his grandpa, and he met a boy he didn't like. Or at least, Caillou thought he didn't like him. <laughs> It seems all's well that ends well, except Miss Persky stupidly leaves the new plate next to the window. Oh, no! Let's review. D.W. filmed her brother without his consent and used it to frame him for a crime he didn't commit. She taunted him after getting him grounded and didn't even offer to help prove his innocence. Arthur and Buster ran all over town to help get their proof, leading them down a rabbit hole which ended with a manhole that made Mr. Reed shut his cake hole. And even after Arthur successfully proved his innocence, it didn't mean a damn thing since everyone ended up right back where they started. So, F you Mr. Reed for rushing to blame your son, F you Mrs. Reed for putting a glass plate next to an open window, F you Miss Persky for being the Caillou narrator, and of course, for making the tape that got her brother in trouble in the first place, F U D W. And I say, hey. hey, I have a Patreon. Sign up at patreon.com slash Neff to get your name in the thank you credits, along with early access to every F U D W and the chance to vote for future episodes. If there's a movie or show you'd like me to talk about, top tier patrons can commission a review for my channel. Check out the link in the description to become an F U D W superfan. Also, I'm now on Cameo. 
so make sure to check out my profile to get a personalized FU video. Next time on FUDW. Do you remember the code for our bank account? It's in the book. The book. And I see. What a wonderful kind of day. If you could learn to work and play and get along with each other.